Next coming to bilirubin metabolism. To understand bilirubin metabolism, you have to understand what exactly happens. So in the blood, you know, heme is broken down into bilirubin. Correct. Now what will happen to this bilirubin? This bilirubin is nothing but it is unconjugated now. Okay. So that means unconjugated means what? What is the meaning of unconjugated? That means it is going to be water insoluble. Correct. That is the first point. So if it is water insoluble means what? It is not going to get excreted in the kidney or in the urine. Okay, so bilirubin is unconjugated. If it's unconjugated, then what is going to happen? It is going to be bound to albumin. Okay, now can you leave it like this? No, you have to excrete it. So what will the body do? The body will bring it to your main hero, which is the liver. Okay, so in the liver, what is happening? There is an enzyme called as UGT. Here what is happening? It is, it is conjugating bilirubin. The unconjugated bilirubin is becoming conjugated bilirubin so you know this conjugation happens in the <coughs> liver so when we studied about bile salts and bile acids we studied bile acids become bile salts okay correct so it become bile salts by conjugation now what is happening once it becomes conjugated it is water soluble and it can get excreted also now this is happening inside the hepatocyte let us just magnify it you're seeing this as the hepatocyte okay so this as the hepatocyte and think that this is going to be the sinusoids where the blood is there. Okay. And this is going to be the biliary canaliculi. This is where the bile is there. So what is happening here? Conjugated bilirubin is there. It requires a channel to be transported. This channel is called as MRP2 transporter with, by which the conjugated bilirubin is getting excreted into the bile. Correct. Once it comes into the bile, what is it going to do? From this bile, it is going to enter into the gut. And from the gut, via the enterohepatic circulation, it is going to come back into the liver. And you know, in the liver, there is sinusoids, correct? So, conjugated bilirubin, once it comes into the gut, it is involved with fat absorption. Then, this conjugated bilirubin <coughs> enters into the sinusoids and it comes back into the liver, which is known as enterohepatic circulation. And you know, 90% of bile is getting into enterohepatic circulation. Now, here there is a transporter called as OATP transporter. Okay, OATP transporter, which is further responsible for bringing this bilirubin back into the hepatocyte okay so that is very important now if you have understood so much you can tell everything about hyperbilirubinemia okay so hyperbilirubinemia can be three types first is unconjugated bilirubin so where can unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia happen okay so unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia will happen anywhere before this step correct Either there is lot of heme lysis leading to increased production of bilirubin. Correct. So either there is hemolysis or this UGT enzyme which is converting unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin. That is reduced. Correct. So UGT enzyme is reduced. <coughs> now UGT enzyme reduction is further into three times. If it is severe reduction, it is called as krigler najjar type 1. See, we will go into the tables. I am just explaining you the approach. So, just listen to me. Writing can happen next when I go to the table. So, just listen to me. Okay. Then, this is severe reduction in UGT1. Almost absent. If it is moderate reduction, it is krigler najjar type 2. And if it is mild reduction, it is called as Gilbert syndrome. Okay. So, this is going to be your unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia now what is happening with unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia clinical features what did i tell you about the clinical features you can see in the clinical features that unconjugated bilirubin is water insoluble so it is not getting excreted in the kidney so what is going to happen to urine urine is going to be pale or normal color and then there is urinary urobilinogen is going to be negative because something has to get absorbed in the water to get excreted in the kidney because that is not happening with unconjugated bilirubin because it is bound to albumin urine is going to be pale and urobilinogen is going to be negative <coughs> okay now next what is going to happen anything beyond this is going to be your conjugated hyperbilirubinemia so where can it happen either this conjugated bile is not getting excreted into the bile canaliculi Correct? So, this could be the defecting MRP2 transporter. 
you call this as dubin johnson syndrome dubin johnson syndrome and here what is happening this conjugated bile is getting is getting accumulated inside the hepatocyte correct the conjugated bile is getting excreted inside the hepatocyte and what is it going to lead to the hepatocyte is going to get pigmented because bile is getting is is getting stored inside the hepatocyte so that is because of this mrp2 defect you call it dubin johnson syndrome now think if this is defective if the o atp is defective the bile has already gone out so there is no no retainment of bile in hepatocyte correct so hepatocyte is not going to be stained the liver is not going to be stained but what is going to happen there is lot of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia in the gut which gets absorbed into the blood okay so this conjugated hyperbilirubinemia gets absorbed in the blood so if you see in unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia if you do total bilirubin it will be high unconjugated bilirubin or indirect bilirubin whatever we call it will be high direct bilirubin will be low whereas here total bilirubin will be again high direct bilirubin is going to be high and the indirect bilirubin is going to be low okay so this is what you are going to see the pattern <coughs> now again what will happen to the urine you will urine show urine bilirubin yes because conjugated bilirubin is getting dissolved in the blood correct so because it gets dissolved in the blood it is conjugated so urine urobilinogen is going to be positive correct urine urobilinogen is going to be positive similarly what will happen to the stool because it is not coming to the gut the um, uh, bilirubin is not coming to the gut what is going to happen here in dubin johnson syndrome you are going to have pale stool that's why an obstructive jaundice because the bile does not come into the gut then there is no formation of stercobilinogen and the urine and the uh, uh, stool is going to be pale in color correct so stool that's why you find pale but whereas urine is going to be pigmented that high dark pigmentation you are going to see correct so it's pretty clear why you're seeing urobilinogen positive and to why pale colored stool is occurring in obstructive jaundice because the the um, uh, bile is not reaching the gut simple so you're going to find pale colored stool in obstructive jaundice and you're going to find normal color stool with pale or normal urine in uh um, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia okay so similarly in this also this oatp being affected this is known as rotors syndrome this is also conjugated hyperbilirubinemia some amount of uh, bilirubin conjugated bilirubin is going to stay here from whatever is coming from the hepatocyte some amount of col uh, conjugated bilirubin will be here so definitely the uh, stool is not going to be that pale color it's not going to be white color but still in any obstructive jaundice you can always tell that it is going to be pale in color so this is about all the syndromes of hyperbilirubinemia and how you should approach a patient of hyperbilirubinemia okay so types of hyperbilirubinemia like i told you unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia predominant bilirubin is indirect or insoluble bilirubin what are the causes i taught you hemolysis krigler najjar and gilbert syndrome urine is going to be normal because this is insoluble stool is going to be normal urobilinogen is going to be negative and this happens because it does not dissolve in water is it very clear un unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia no doubts all these points you clearly know all these points are potential questions okay next is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia this has already become water soluble so what is it going to happen the causes you know dubin johnson and rotor the urine is going to be dark because it's already conjugated it is not entering the gut but it can go into the blood so you're going to have dark urine but pale stool because there's no bile in the gut okay and urobilinogen will be increased mostly because there is conjugated <coughs> bilirubin entering into the kidney so this appears in the urine that's why dark urine pale stool okay mixed is when both is happening that is liver is impaired so there is not enough ugt to make conjugated to unconjugated to conjugated however some ugt will be functioning so some function will be there again this conjugated cannot get excreted outside so both things are going to be there so you're going to have dark urine pale or clay stool in mixed and the urobilinogen is going to be variable so even if uro uh, ugt enzyme transfers and give unconjugated to conjugated 
the excretion is not very high it will go reflex back into the blood and it will cause conjugated hyperbilirubinemia with pale or clay colored stool and dark urine okay so this is mixed so i hope you have understood these three things clearly these are the types of hyperbilirubinemia where you are having unconjugated conjugated and mixed these two are mainly that is going to come as questions okay now next is genetic causes of jaundice which we already finished i told you krigler-najjar 1 krigler-najjar 2 and gilbert all three are going to have unconjugated this is in reducing order of severity that is in krigler-najjar it is you are going to have absent ugt this is going to be severe hyperbilirubinemia with life threatening condition and it will cause kernicteris in the neonate okay whereas in krigler najar 2 it is partial deficiency so you can give some enzyme inducer like phenobarbital see how our pharmacology knowledge is coming to use here we are giving a enzyme inducer to induce the enzyme ugt so you don't have to mug up that phenobarbital is the treatment of Triglanajar, you know that it's an enzyme inducer which is going to induce UGT, which is going to bring down the indirect hyperbilirubinemia. Next is Gilbert syndrome. Again, it is only mild reduction of UGT. Even I had a friend with Gilbert syndrome, you know. Uh, if you see the baseline bilirubin, it will be 2 or 3, but they are completely normal. So, this is going to be mild hyperbilirubinemia and it is benign now this is triggered by fasting that is very important why is it triggered by fasting so in fasting you know what happens lipolysis happens correct because lipolysis is the energy source now when lipolysis happens fatty acid is released where did i tell you bilirubin was binding to bilirubin was binding to albumin correct so albumin you know binds to acid all the acids are binding to albumin so what is this fatty acid going to do fatty acid is going to displace the bilirubin and let me draw here fatty acid is going to displace the bilirubin and it is going to get bound to albumin so increased bilirubin is going into the liver and the ugt is not sufficient <coughs> to transfer all this bilirubin unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin so what is going to happen the person is going to end up with jaundice okay so that is why you ask these patients with gilbert syndrome to not keep any type of fast or not to take jobs which are stressful which will induce hemolysis okay then dubin johnson and rota syndrome you already know if you want a trick to remember you can remember like this doctors have to be conscious correct doctors always have to be conscious while treating so dr is dubin johnson and rotor <coughs> and con is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia so dubin johnson patient is going to have conjugated rotor is conjugated dubin johnson is mrp2 is defective and this increased direct this is going to be benign black liver why because you are going to have bilirubin that is getting uh, uh, accumulated inside the hepatocyte that's why you have black liver but in rotor syndrome there is no black liver it's the same thing but there's no black liver why because bilirubin is already excreted outside it's not just that hepatocyte is not taking it inside so that defective storage is what is causing it so that is why the liver color is going to be normal in rotor syndrome okay so i hope you understood this approach to jaundice and hyperbilirubinemia very clearly okay